So, after that, now let's look at the homologous series, whereby we also looked at homologous series in the periodic table. So, in the periodic table and the chemical families in form two. So, let's look at homologous series. So, what are homologous series? So, this mainly refers to organic compounds. This mainly refers to organic compounds, yes, that have the same general formula that also the members differ from one another by a similar unit and then they also have a similar uh, physical and chemical properties. So if the members of the organic family, they have the same general formula, like for example, you see these are the general formulas for the families alkene, alkene, alkyne. For the alkene, you see that the general formula is CnH2n plus 2. That is the general formula for all the alkenes. If you want to find how many hydrogen does an alkene have, so you just substitute. N is the number of carbon atoms that we have, uh, etc. So we have for the alkenes, the general formula is CnH2n and then alkynes, CnH2n minus 2. So the members have the same general formula. Like for the alkenes, they use that formula, only alkenes use that, alkenes use that, and then for the alkynes, they use their own general formula. Apart from that, the homologous series, you see that the members differ from one another by a similar unit. So, like for example, the first member uh, is different from the second member by, let's say, a value of one. The second member is different from the third member by a value of one. The, second, the third member is different from the fourth member by a value of one. So, the members differ from one another by a similar unit. So that forms the homologous series. And then lastly, the members of the homologous series, we see that they have the same chemical and physical properties. Like for example, you see, um, for the alkenes, if you burn alkenes, they don't produce soot. If you burn alkenes, they produce less soot. If you burn alkynes, all alkynes, they produce a lot of soot. So the members have similar properties in them. So uh, apart from that, what are now the characteristics of the homologous series? So you can see that since we have the homologous series, since we have the different families of the hydrocarbons, yes, there must be uh, one or two, three characteristics of the homologous series. So you see that the first characteristic we have just mentioned is that uh, the members possess the members possess a common uh, a common general formula. Like for example, we said for the alkenes, al uh, alkene, alkene, alkyne. So the members share or possess the same general formula. Apart from that, you can say that the members have a similar chemical property. So they have similar, uh, let's just generalize, they have a similar property. So the members share a similar properties. Apart from that, we can say that the members have a similar structure and name. So the members have similar structures. Like for example, for the alkenes, all the alkenes have a single bond. Alkenes, all the alkenes, at least there must be a double bond somewhere. Alkynes, all alkynes, at least there must be a triple bond somewhere. So they share a similar structure and names. For example, for the alkenes, the name of the alkenes ends with A and E. So all the members of the alkenes, their names are ending with A and E. Like we have the first one, methane, we have ethane, we have propane, we have butane, we have pentane. So the name ends with A and E. For the alkenes, we have ethane, uh, ethene, we have propene, we have butene. So you see, the names end with A and E to denote that. These ones, uh, they are in this family. These ones are found in this family. So apart from that, we see that they have a common characteristic of physical properties. Like, for example, if you burn them, they will produce soot. If you dissolve them in bromine water, the unsaturated will discolorize. The saturated will not discolorize. So they have physical and chemical property. And also you see, like for example, the alkenes, they have a similar method of preparation. So you can be able to prepare alkenes using a similar method. Just that we are going, we are just going to change very something very small, and then it's going to now give us the next alkene. But the method of preparation is exactly the same. So the examples of the preparation methods we have, uh, like for example, decarboxylation, whereby this mainly refers to the removing of a carbon atom from a carbon chain. So if you remove a carbon atom, just from the word decarboxylation, you remove a carbon atom from the carbon chain, we are going to have uh, an alkene, like for example. 
So apart from that, another preparation method we have by reduction of alkyl halides, whereby these are alkenes being bonded to hydrogen atoms. So if we remove that, uh, the halogen, if we remove that halogen from an alkene, we are going to remain with a pure alkene. Like, for example, you see this structure that you can see. We have 2-bromo-4,5-dimethylheptane. So this is the structure, 2-bromo-4,5-dimethylheptane. So why did we name it as 2-bromo-4,5-dimethylheptane? It's because, you see, when naming hydrocarbons, we're going to look at this in the upcoming topics, but when naming hydrocarbons, we always consider the lowest number possible. So if you can see, this side which we have H3 and then C, and then this other side we have bromine. So we start naming from the branch which is closest to the, uh, to the last carbon atom. So you can see, on that other side, we have bromine, at least it appears in carbon number two. On this other side, we have the first, uh, the first branch which is, which is methyl. The first branch which is methyl, it is appearing immediately after carbon number three. So the lowest number possible, we take that branch on that, on that other side, which has the lowest number possible. And in this branch, we have bromine, which is at least closer to the end of the structure. So the longest carbon chain, how are you going to identify the longest carbon chain? So the longest carbon chain, you are going to identify it from the last carbon on the right and the last carbon on the left. Like, for example, uh, where bromine is, we see that there is a carbon on top. So since bromine is the branch which is almost closer to the end of the chain, therefore, that carbon which is almost to the end is the one which, is, which you are going to, to name it as carbon number one. So as you can see, the labels of the carbon, we have that carbon on top of bromine is carbon number one, and then the next one is carbon number two, whereby bromine is, then carbon number three, then the first branch uh, of methyl is appearing in carbon number four, the other branch is appearing in carbon number five, and then we have carbon number six, and then finally, the H3C, which is carbon number seven. So we have, yeah, we have that structure, which is 2-bromo-4,5-dimethylheptane. So why did we name it as 2-bromo-4,5-dimethylheptane? So bromine as the branch is appearing immediately in carbon, number, in carbon number two. So that is the, we start with that value, that number. So bromine is appearing in carbon number two. So we write 2-bromo. From the word bromine, we don't write bromine as a whole, but we write the short, which is bromo. If it was chlorine, we could have said chloro. If it was fluorine, we could have said fluoro. But now this is bromine, so it is bromo. So we have two to denote where the bromine uh, or where exactly bromine is found in the structure. So it's in carbon number two. So you say two and then hyphen bromo and then hyphen we have the first and the second branch. Now the methyl is appearing in carbon number four. As you can see, the first methyl is appearing in carbon number four. And then the next methyl is appearing in carbon number five. So they are all methyl, they are both methyl. So, and that's why we say it is two bromo, then the first methyl is four, the second methyl is five. So to denote the position or the number of this methyl, we separate them with a comma. So the first methyl is in four, the second methyl is in five. So it is two bromo hyphen four comma five, and then we identify the branch. So we have two methyl. So since we have two methyl, we are going to say not 2-methyl, but dimethyl. So it is 2-4-dimethyl. Di to mean that they are 2. If they were 3, we could have said trimethyl. If they were 4, we could have said tetramethyl. If it was only 1, we could have just said methyl. But now since they are 2, appearing at 4 and 5, we'll say 4-5 to identify their positions, and then dimethyl to mean that they are 2 in 4 and 5. So we have two hyphen bromo hyphen four comma five and then hyphen dimethyl heptane. Heptane now the longest carbon chain. So the longest carbon chain is a seven carbon chain. So number seven we have heptane. So why did we name it as heptane? It's because it's found in the alkane group. How did we know that it is in the alkane group? We don't have any double bond in this structure. Even though this is a condensed structure, we are going to look at it. This is a condensed structure, but we cannot see any double bond. So there's no double bond, so that is an alkene. 
So apart from that, we can look at another structure just to confirm what we have, uh, what we have just gone through. So let's look at another structure whereby, now this structure is 2-bromo, it's 2-bromo-butane. So why did you say it's a butane? It's a butane because the longest carbon chain is a but, B-U-T. We have four carbon chain. So the first carbon, as you can see, the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. So since we have four carbons, therefore this one becomes a butane. But, B-U-T. Since it's, it is an alkane, we finish with the word A-N-E. So the name, full name is butane. So we have uh, the bromine is appearing immediately after carbon number two. So the first carbon, the second carbon, we have bromine. So to name this structure, we identify the position of bromine in the structure. So the position of bromine is in carbon number two. So since bromine is in carbon number two, we identify this position. So we say it is two bromo. So the position where it is, the number, and then the name of that halogen or the branch. So it is two, and then bromo, and then you finish with the, with the name of the chain, whereby the name of the chain is butane, because it has four carbon atoms. So again, you identify the position. We have two, whereby bromine is appearing in carbon number two. So it is two, and then the name of the branch is bromo. So you have two bromo, and then you finish with the, uh, with the name of the, of the chain, which is butane. So the name is two bromo butane. So for example, if we remove the bromine, in the 2 bromo 4 5 dimethyl heptane, if we remove the bromine, we are going to have an alkane. If we also remove the branches, we are going to remain with an alkane as the, another method of preparing alkanes. If we also remove the bromine in 2 bromo butane, we are going to remain with an alkane uh, as another method of preparing the alkanes. So, that is a method of preparing alkanes is by reduction of alkyl halides. So, the third method of preparing alkanes we have. Hydrogenation of alkenes, hydrogenation, from the word hydrogen. Hydrogenation means addition of hydrogens in an alkene. So, if we react an alkene with hydrogen, we'll be breaking the double bond. So, if we break the double bond, it will mean that we are going to have only single bonds. If we only have single bonds, we are going to go back to alkene as you can see in the structure. So the double bond is going to break. If the double bond will break, now those free electrons are going to, are going to be captured by hydrogen. Now the hydrogen, uh, uh, like whereby the alkene is reacting with the hydrogen. Now those free hydrogens will react with the free electrons and then we are going to come out of alkenes and go to alkenes because the double bond will be broken and now we'll be having only single bonds. So that is another method of preparation by hydrogenation of the alkenes. So the other method of preparation of, uh, of hydrocarbons, like for example the alkenes, we have reduction of alcohols, reduction of aldehydes, reduction of the ketones, whereby in ketones you are going to look at them in the upcoming classes and the aldehydes, or reduction of fatty acids and their derivatives. So if you reduce alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, or fatty acids, we are going to go to, or we are going to prepare the, al, uh, the alkenes. So you have those methods of alkene preparation. Again, this, this is just an introduction. We are going to look at this, all these things that we have studied in the upcoming classes. So apart from that, let's look at the first, uh, the first family of hydrocarbons, which is now the alkenes. So let's